Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Dr. Janet McMorty, and I was and still am a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. This week is another industry episode, and my guest this week is the most requested guest I've had since I started this podcast. People sliding into my DMs, sending me emails saying, please, may we hear from this individual? We'd love to hear more from this individual. Secrets out of the bag if you've already seen the title of this podcast, but my guest this week is my own agent, Maya Ritter from Ritter Talent Agency. I'm so excited for this episode. She gives you all the things you want to hear from a podcast with a talent agent, how to submit properly to an agent, what to do to keep your agent happy, what to do to make their job easier, and what to do as beginning actors to start either looking for an agent or start growing in your career as an actor. Now, once you hear her episode, everyone is going to want to submit to be on her roster. Trust me, she is that legendary. If you're going to submit to her, one... Please listen to this episode because she outlines exactly how to submit to an agent. So if you don't do it properly, that's just silly nonsense. And two, please, please do not say that I, Janet McMorty, recommended you submit to her unless you and I have spoken together previously and we have a relationship and we've talked about your acting career. I know this is a very negative Nancy thing to say, but trust me, I'm guilty of this. When you listen to podcasts, you feel like you're a lot more personally connected to the host than you actually are. So please don't say, I talk to Janet and she says I should submit to you. You can say you heard her episode on Second Act Actors. By all means, do that. But please don't say that you have a personal recommendation from me unless you and I have spoke and I have said, I think you should submit to my agent because I've told Maya this and she, if she gets email submissions from people saying that they spoke to me pr personally and that I recommended I, that they submit to her, she's going to ask me. And if I have no idea who you are, that is a very bad burning bridges thing to do in this industry that is very, very, very tiny. No pressure, but she's incredible, as you will hear. She needs no introduction. Please enjoy my incredible agent, Maya Ritter. off tell me your story and how you got to be an agent so i've been in this industry in in varying different degrees for a while as of course one of my talent you know a bit about my backstory um but it's a pretty interesting one because i feel like everyone has a bit of a journey in this industry and for me when i was a kid um, that was like acting was the only thing that i ever really identified with bit of a weird kid growing up didn't really have a stable social circle. And when I discovered acting, um, you know, I saw these actors on TV that I, I aspired to be. Um, and so I begged and begged and begged my mom um, to, you know, get me into the industry or find me an agent. Um, I always thought I'd be really, really good at it. Um, and so uh, we found an agency that represented me. And that's how I started my initial journey in this. And I call it the industry because it is such a large umbrella. And that's how I started off in the industry. So I, as a kid, was kind of unique from my family. My family wasn't really in the arts or in the creative industry growing up. Um, my mom was an accountant. My dad was a construction worker. Um, my brother is also in trades. And then I was kind of this very erratic young child that could only really, um, I was always very analytical and I could only really connect with art. So mom finds me an agent. I get into it. 
And there's a bit of a unicorn moment for me where um, I book a couple of roles that were really large caliber roles. And then all of a sudden I find myself at quite a young age being skyrocketed into this industry um, and having to kind of navigate through it as a kid. Luckily, I had a very incredibly supporting mother um, that decided to really take on the bulk of the mediation portion of my career as an actor. Because I was a kid, I needed to be chaperoned on set, I was doing uh, tutoring, so I had to be taken out of school. And my mom was working as an accountant at an engineering firm at the time, and she decided to take a step away from her full-time career to manage mine. During that time, she ended up starting to work alongside the agent that represented me, and she then started to onboard and train as a talent agent. So... Started off as my manager, went into uh, being a talent agency, and she fell in love with the industry. When she was younger, she always wanted to be an actor, but she never pushed for it. And then she's seeing her child now push for, I think, something that she always connected with. And long of the short, RTA came into fruition. Ritter Talent Agency came into fruition um, 2016-2017. Now, during this time, I went through your quintessential Macaulay Culkin phase where I I had like an existential crisis and I was like, I got to figure out who Maya is and I'm going to travel around Southeast Asia for two years with a backpack and a motorbike and I'm going to figure out what it's almost what it feels like to be a child because I never really was, um, it's sometimes hard to be a child in the industry. Um, cause there's a lot of set expectations involved with that and you have to grow up quite fast. So if you don't also, this actually comes back to agents. If you don't have the right agent that's supporting your child. And luckily I did, but I was still a kid in the industry that just needed to figure it out. I digress. Long of the short, um, I ended up doing a little bit of a Maya discovery phase. And when I came back into it, it was very much full circle. So Terry Ritter, as you know, but maybe other people don't know, is my mother. She's the one that founded the agency. And when we came back together as mother and daughter in the industry that really we deepened our bond from as mother and daughter. It was like this eureka moment um, where I found what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and my career path. And it was, um, of course, connected with acting, but I realized humbly that I didn't want to be an actor. Like, I, I kind of, I went through that experience. I loved it. It was so enjoyable. I still have a lot of remnants of kind of the, you know, like that little actor. There's always a little actor in me, but I'm able to hold space for like a massive roster of other actors. So in some ways now what my mother did with me, I'm doing with other actors living vicariously through a beautiful journey that all of you guys take. So super sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's, that's just, it's just lovely. Right. And I think, uh, is there any part, and this is kind of a deep question, like any part that you miss or you feel like, or that you've brought in now besides, and it's, and it's interesting. I'm just going to do a little caveat. I remember when you and I first met in our meeting and the words that you said about, you know, holding space for actors, I was still like, like, it like hit, right. Like hit me. And I was like, Oh my, Oh my God. I never, thought about an agent talent relationship like that and what a lovely kind of thing to say to another human being right I was like that's just really really nice to nice to hear um but is there anything that you notice that you can just pull from your prior acting career into now as a talent agent besides the fact that you're you can literally empathize with your talent I I think that that's such a great question because I do think that there is a clear cut um, 
divide between potentially an agent that hasn't had experience, you know, uh, in the front facing aspect of the industry or potentially an agent. And to be honest, I think a lot of agents have stories um, within this space before they get into uh, operating as an agent. Um, But you have to have connection to the actors and what they're doing. Because if you don't, how are you supposed to support them? There's, you know, it's because this is a very um, emotional industry and it's a very psychological industry. So if you're not able to necessarily understand what another individual is going through when they're doing their soft tapes and their auditions and their script uh, development, uh, like everything, it would be really hard to, I think, support them really in mediating their career. And I feel like the feedback that I give is of value. And I'm confident in saying that. Um, because I was so deeply rooted on the front end of it. Um, And so, yeah, coming back to what you said about compassion, I am very compassionate, very compassionate. I'm also very pragmatic. And um, unfortunately, a lot of actors are left to their own devices and are not given the tools and kind of have to figure it out on their own. And I hope that I can be some sort of catalyst growth um, or change or development in an actor because a lot of them just aren't given the tools. And I wasn't given the tools. So if I reflect back on when I was that age, if I was given a better understanding about how I potentially needed to approach this, I could have been more reflective with myself as a person. Mm. Yeah, so I have a a question about that because a lot of the people I chat with on this podcast, and myself Mm. included, had a completely different career path before they decided to go into acting or simultaneously pursue acting. So there were no tools given. It's not like we came from theater school or anything like that. And even people who come from theater school kind of just get like thrust in this industry and are overwhelmed and, oh my gosh, there's a business to this. And it's so overwhelming and disheartening and dysfunctional even for some people if they haven't been, like you were saying, given the tools. Um... Do you have any loaded question? Do you have any advice for people who are coming into this without that or from a different career path on how to get started? Yeah, I think, and I think you're right. A lot of people, you know, even if you come out of school for, and luckily when you go to school for something like this, they're teaching you a bit more about the business side of it and uh, the strategy and the linear approach that you need to have to certain day-to-day operations as an actor. But with that being said, I think that still they come out and then it just can get a bit messy because this is a very volatile industry. And that is also, it's a very high risk industry in terms of the amount of competition, um, in terms of how much it shifts and changes consistently, um, that it can be really challenging to find your bearings and to find your foundation. I would say there's two sides to this coin, right? You need to be in some ways Uh, you know, an artist and expressive and vulnerable and emotional and all those things that actors very much are. But you also have to be pragmatic and you have to process things and you have to look at the, what you are doing and how consistently you are doing it. Because I'll even say for myself, I'll use myself as an example because I don't want to touch on anyone in my roster I, or um, anyone else for that matter. I'll use myself as a great example of the things that I feel like I could have done better at. Take your agent seriously. Hit your deadlines. Be consistent. Like follow up in a, not in an emotional way, 
Don't be reactive. Find your own self-validation. And then when you need feedback, ask for feedback in a straightforward way. And those are, I feel like, all things that, because this is a business, and I think that sometimes actors can lose touch with that because they get too ingrained into their emotions, that there are certain approaches that could make you very successful, especially in the agent to actor, because we both need each other. Like, that's a big thing. You know, I I actually sent uh, a video um, to you guys last night from Stephen Mann at Mann Casting that said the same thing as a casting director. He needs you just as much as you need him. We all need each other. We're a team here. So at the end of the day, as a fully operating business, I, this is my full-time career. And my expectation is that even though you may have things on the side, you have to approach it like it's a full-time career. Well, you know, I like I am a compassionate person, but I'm not your therapist. And so um, you have to make sure that you that you do have those baseline foundations and that you are meeting expectations. So you should um, kind of write down a list on those deliverables. Like when it comes to pitching to an agent, for example, baseline deliverables is that you have professional headshots done that you have a well-rounded looking resume and that you have a well-rounded cover letter. We look at these things. If you're just sending me an email saying, Hey, what's up? My name's Michael. I really want to get into this industry because you know, I've been wanting to do it for years. That doesn't say (laughs) anything to me, Michael, Michael. So it's like, you know, um, Make sure that you're approaching me in a well-rounded, uh, professional, and well-executed manner because that shows me a lot about how you would be to work with because this is work. You got to put in the work. A lot of people forget about that. And then number two, yeah, like have – don't send me an iPhone selfie. Like if you really want this, like invest in some headshots – Um, And then I would say layered on top top of this, especially with where you're currently at, right away, before I even ask for it, send me your self-tape setup. Send me a slate or a recent self-tape that you did to show me what you got going on for your self-tapes so that I know where you're at so that if potentially I want to onboard you, I can already give you feedback for what you need to do to get your self-tapes up to date. Because the expectations that casting is having at this point, as well as what I'm having, is that, you know, we're, we're, we're leveling up. We're, we're continuing on with this digital. So we have to kind of approach it like that. And then number two, once you have an agent, um, once again, we're not your therapists. I'm, I think, more so on the, um, yeah, the compassion end of things. I'm very easy to talk to, as you know, Janet. Like, I'm quite bubbly and very playful, but don't take my kindness for weakness. Um, so, you know, understand that I'm here holding space, but that also my main day-to-day operations are gunning for you guys. And so kind of approach me the way that I'm mutually approaching this, which is once again, as a business, you know, consistently. Yeah, it's funny because there's so many parallels between um, talking to you or talking to anyone in these industry episodes that I'm calling them, people within the industry who aren't actors, casting directors, directors, agents, whoever. Because I think there's such a blindfold that we put on as actors, or I don't know if we just ignore it or if we just all think we're like the sun in our own little universe and everyone revolves around us, where... There's always this attitude, and I know this is a broad generalization because not everyone's like that, of like, so-and-so is not doing enough for me. Yes. Because we don't because we don't see it, right? Casting isn't doing enough. Agents aren't doing enough. You know, the director, the producer, everyone. And I think it's just because we don't see what all that you do. And I don't know why we think that. But it's definitely a, an attitude that I've come across, guilty of feeling it. 
But what are your thoughts on that? Like, the, my next question is, please tell me about your days, how a day that an agent works, because I think we all need to hear that. But like, what is your attitude on that? Is that something that you felt from people? Um, yeah, I know that's a bit of a negative. It's a, question, it's a but... wonderful question, though, because I think one, the human condition is a tricky thing because we all have ego and sometimes we can get lost in our ego. And from the role of an agent, um, we're working, of course, on the back end of things a lot of the time. What I will say is that um, as an actor, you are this one single person you know, navigating through it. And I understand that that can be a challenge. As an agent, I'm one single person juggling so many different people and different energies and people at different places. And I'm working with casting directors and producers and directors and trying to mediate the COVID test, trying to get the submission deadlines in and trying to do this and trying to do that. It's not a woe is me. And that's why I don't want to speak on it from an ego space because that's what I don't like to bring into my roster. And that's what I don't, I try and invite people to not operate off of, of, um, their own ego. Cause we all get lost in it. Right. This like victim mentality of, well, I'm doing all this and you're not fucking showing up for me. Well, here's the thing. We're all trying our best. And sometimes we just have to see it from the perspective of another individual. And yes, a lot of actors don't know what's happening on the back end. Right. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different, uh, what do you call it? There's a lot of different steps that we're going through as agents, as casting, as producers, as directors to get to the final goal, which is creating something, creating a project. Right. And there are so many different people that are going down the line. And in many ways, it starts with me and you. So one thing that I has been a resounding amount of feedback that I've spoken to with other talent when I'm doing onboarding meetings is that they've had challenging times with their agents or that there hasn't been communication or that they haven't had a relationship. Now, I can't speak for other agents on this, but... Uh, what it comes back to like, don't, you, you need to almost for a moment, take your emotions out of it and be a bit more stoic on how you're processing these things. Because I am able to remove myself from work at the end of the day. And I think as an actor, you need to let go of your ego at the end of the day as well. And if for whatever reason, I think there's two sides. I think there's someone that, um, not has over expectations, but is operating off of ego. And then there's someone that isn't able to validate themselves. And both are very challenging traits to have in an industry like this because um, both will show and both will end up pigeonholing you, if that makes sense. And I'm trying to put this in, in, in the kindest way possible because I, I, I can understand from a psychological standpoint why people behave the way they behave. <laughs> but what I will say is that I am really trying my best and juggling so many things at once and one thing that I still do is I make the time. Um, I feel like if I'm not able to make the time, then I have to actually look at myself. And I feel like if actors are not feeling, um, I don't know, validated or appreciated, look at yourself before you offset blame on another person. 
put that on a t-shirt. That's yeah. Do it. Yeah. Look at yeah. like look yeah. inward before you start projecting outward. Cuz it is, you know, and I think we've all I either been on a set as an actor where someone's working off of their ego or you know, we've been confronted with with a situation like that. And what I will say is that typically it's a projection. And also, typically, you're not fucking communicating. I'm sorry. But you're not actually being transparent with me. If you have a problem with me as your agent, that's major, major red flag. Talk to me. We can probably figure it out. And vice versa. It's like couples it's, counseling. It's, it's like a relationship. It, 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 it it's genuinely a relationship. is like... Especially between the agent to actor. It's very much a relationship. If you don't respect your agent, I mean, get a new agent. Why why stay in a toxic relationship? It's the same with me. It's like if I'm really struggling um, with one of my actors and I feel like I've communicated to the best of my ability and it's still not resonating or I'm still not seeing the change in the shift, it's it's so similar to a relationship because you can't change another person. They have to figure it out on their own. And if I'm desperately trying to shift or change or grow someone, but it's not resonating, then I also have to at some point move forward. And, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. And it doesn't have to be a bridge burned. Like it doesn't always have to be, but usually what happens is that actors will leave it way too long sitting in stagnancy in uh, in a in a um, agency relationship without actually speaking on it or or articulating themselves on how they're feeling, and then all of a sudden they get to a point where it bubbles up and they move on to a different agency and they then have a bad taste in their mouth from that one. But, you know, a lot of the time it, it really is a relationship and, and sometimes it's just based on like, you know, you got to change, you got to change it up. You got to switch the pace. Like you want something different. It's cool. Um, but we have to both respect each other. That's the thing. Like don't, don't get an ego in this industry. Just when you're doing well, you know, ju- just because, uh, you know, you're, you're, you know, like stay humble, stay Stay humble. Is there anything that actors can do to make your job easier? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would say the main thing, um, genuinely, and I think this goes in every single career, is um, if you mess up, like if you miss a deadline or um, or there's a date conflict or you're booking out, like I actually genuinely don't need your life story or an excuse because it, it just is what it is. I just need a, a more linear, like I don't need um, a script on – yeah, I don't need a screenplay on why you weren't able to make this deadline. Like, I would appreciate the recognition and the, hey, I'm going to make sure that I take these steps next time. I don't need to hear, well, I was doing the, because it, it like, you missed the deadline. Like, it's just, it is what it is. Um, unless it's an emergency situation, of course, like, you can articulate that. Or you can even, you don't even have to go in depth with me. You can just say, hey, it was, I'm so sorry. I had a big emergency, you know, um, this, da, 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 da. But it's because then I can put out the fire faster than going back and forth. Like, first and foremost, just, hey, Maya, I'm so sorry. I missed my deadline, da, 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 da. I'm able to get the self-tape in for you. Like, just tell me first and foremost if you're able to get it in. Or can I get, still get this in or not? Boom. That already makes a deeper understanding of whether I have to now send a decline or whether I can potentially push back that deadline. 
Number two, um, you know, if it comes to like date conflicts, that stuff happens all the time. Like, you know, as an agent, as a casting director, we've all dealt with date conflicts. Um, it's just something that happens when you have outside dates and tentative dates and bookable dates. Um, so just let me know your date conflicts as soon as possible. Um, and then we can try and figure out a work around them. But especially when it comes to like the big mess ups, like missing a deadline without informing me beforehand. The biggest thing that I need to know first and foremost is if you're able to um, meet that deadline at, or not meet that deadline, sorry, if you're able to make up for that deadline potentially today. If you can send me that self-tape a little bit later on today, then at least I can inform casting that I'm able to get this in for you if, you know, um, if they're still accepting it. Uh, number two, if you're not able to make the deadline, then just tell me and then, you know, maybe go into the why, but the biggest thing I need is recognition that this is not going to be happening on a consistent basis. Um, so that's kind of baseline principles. Um, it's just like, those are the biggest things. If you feel like you need to take a step back, this is a big thing. If you feel like you need to take a step back because you're overwhelmed with your personal life, because most actors have personal lives, I want you to feel safe with talking to me and saying that you are. Instead of putting so much stuff on your back that, boom, that's usually what happens, you start missing deadlines. Because I would rather you take a pause than you start messing up your business and my business and the business of casting directors. Take a step back before it gets to that point where you're overwhelmed, you're in burnout, because we've all been in burnout. I've been in burnout. And guess what happens? I become the worst version of myself. Um, and yeah, I make up excuses and I'm not honoring and setting boundaries. So those are the two major, major things I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's really helpful to hear. Cause I, I think there probably is a bit of fear in with people and that you know, agent talent relationship, like a fear of, you know, I'm not saying like with you personally, but just again, as general, a fear of, oh, if I say I want to step back, my agent's going to drop me or my yeah. agent. And yeah, yeah, you're already being like, well, no. <laughs> it's not necessarily. It's like, I've look, I've had it where someone has been such a ping pong that it's almost like, okay, well, you're coming in and out and in and out and in and out. And it comes back to that relationship. I feel like I have no relationship with you. Like, why am I going to gun for you when I'm terrified that you're going to not show up for me? So that's a big thing. Once again, we all have personal lives and we all sometimes need to take a moment. Um, but if I'm like, if I'm constantly having to live in concern that I'm going to send you out to something and you're not going to be able to meet like just baseline expectations, it's like being hired by any employer. At some point, the employer is going to be like, well, there's a hundred, like, especially in this industry, there's tons of other people that would absolutely kill to be in your position. So wait, why am I putting so much energy into it? But you also, if you once again are, are going through something personally or you need to take a step back, that's fine. But if it's happening on a consistent basis, that circles back to what I said about ego and what I said about projection. You have to look inward and you have to realize if this is really the career path that you want to take. Cause you got to kind of dream big in this industry and you got to put in your, you got to put in your footwork, just, but just like anything, you got to put in the time. If you it, like, I think that sometimes people live in fantasy world and it's like, you got to dream big, but you also got to put in the time, you know, you can't just, it's like, it's not like point Z all the time. Like you got to go through the alphabet, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Which it's funny because I have said this many times in this podcast. I've said I've said this many times in this podcast. I think people have this weird idea about acting and it comes from, you know, because everyone has that story of they know someone who knows someone who got right, like spotted at a mall and then they just launched yeah. their career into superstardom where every other job has a logical stepwise approach. I'll use Linear. right. Like I went to university, then I went to medical school. Now I'm a doctor done. Right. Where acting for some reason, even though there is, a linear approach to it, people are like, no, I want to go from nobody to superstardom because I know yeah. someone who did. Yeah. I, I, yeah. that's the thing is, is you can't really, uh, and that's why I said at the beginning, I had a unicorn moment because those things at times happen and also what's really freaking cool as an agent um, is watching that happen with our actors, right? Is like one day they get that role and it changes the trajectory of their entire career. And just like you said, there's no real linear approach and um, – everyone has a different metric to success in this industry and what that looks like to them. And I, I think, you know, being, uh, booked on something that you just connect with and that you just like, is like the character that you always wanted to kind of be or whatever metric you want to place on it because everyone has a different one. What I'll say is that we see those moments happen as an agency all the time. Um, and I think anyone, and it's something that I'm going to touch on in our, in our zoom meeting as a roster is that, um, I, you know, I've sat with people for a year or two years and, and worked with them. And then all of a sudden it just happens. Like one, one day it just happens and you know, you never know when it is, but I will say that all the people that have had that happen to them, um, it's always been through consistency and, and maintenance. And so it comes back to that whole point A to point Z you know, surely that can happen. We've seen it. We've seen it. But as well, like with that whole quote unquote unicorn, it's, it's like, you know, you guys all are wonderful and special in your own right and to whatever degree. And maybe it's not a unicorn moment. Maybe it was just like, that was that, that, that's their journey, right? This is your journey. And you can't have comparison in this industry. Um, and you also can't have comparison in life because that's just going to set you back um, so much because you're constantly looking at an example of someone that is not you and that's not your story and that's not your journey. So um, I would say instead of looking at another person's you look at the fundamentals and the priorities that you want to set for yourself and the standards that you want to set for yourself. Maybe that person has similar standards to you, but that's not your story. That's not your journey. Focus on your journey. Focus on where you're at, you know, and, um, and then one day, similar to love, one day maybe you'll wake up and you'll meet the love of your life. You never know when this stuff happens. You just never know. And I think the more that you focus on the principles of who you want to be in this industry and what you want to become, that's when all of a sudden you wake up and those, those moments do happen because you're aligned. Like I very much believe in, in, in being, um, pulling those things into, to your, to your life. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific moments, like favorite memories, even as an actor, but as a talent agent as well, too? Oh, my God. Kind of, I love asking that That's question. That's what's so <laughs> sweet about being an agent is, is like, you know, in many ways, a lot of those things happen 
every single day, just in varying degrees. I think uh, the question that I often get is like, what was the biggest project that you booked an actor on? Do you have any celebrities on your roster? You know, and like, it's, it's so funny because, you know, let's just say, you know, we've all across the board booked our talent on very big projects with very big names. Um, but, you know, it's like, that's one singular project. Like, there's so many other things. Um, and it's, it's not even about the project. It's about the emotion and the way that it's experienced with an actor. So, um, the, the, like seeing my actors get so excited when they book something is, it, it fires me up and it never gets old. And I love making that call. I love it. And it could be a fucking Harvey's commercial, right? It doesn't have to be this big thing, um, quote unquote. You know, it doesn't have, sorry, because that is a big thing. That's the thing. Like, these things are awesome. Like, when you get a booking, how fired up are you? It's like this awesome feeling. It's like out of the sea of people that audition for this, because I'll just let you know right now, there's like 500 people auditioning for commercials and you were the one that booked it, you know? And it's like, and I understand how exciting and um, amazing that experience is. So, um, what I'll say is, is the experience of telling someone you booked it and the, the, the understanding that, yeah, it could be a commercial, it could be a series regular. Um, and you know, they are quite contrasting, but all of it is quite exciting. Um, it's like winning the lottery in some ways. It's like you take a chance on it, right? And and you got it. And so um, I would say that honestly, like it's a daily experience. Um, it just, it gets my dopamine just fucking up here. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. It's so good. It's my favorite thing to do. I'll like get on the phone call. I'll like sometimes play it up as well. I'll be like, how's your day going? How are you doing? Like I'll be super mundane. It's this is my way of living vicariously <laughs> as an actor. Like I'll like put on this role, of being like, yeah. So, anyways, like I have some bad news. I'll be like, yeah, fuck, I fucked the role. Like it's great. I love it. I love it. I don't think you know. I talk to my mom about this as well. Like it's it's uh, it's not something that gets old. I'll say that much. It's not something that like, gets old. There's a reason why. Um, you know, a lot of people, regardless of what happens in their lives as actors, there's a reason why we still have people that have been doing this for 25, 30, 40 years. They may be doing stuff on the side, but they're still doing this for the art, for the enjoyment, and for the experience. I'm just lucky enough that I get to do it as a full-time career, and I get to have um, that experience with you guys. How sweet is that? That's so Am sweet. My upselling being an yeah. agent. Yeah. Are people going to start? Yeah. My upselling being an agent. They're like, this sounds yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can, you, can you take me through an average day for you? What does that look yeah. like um, as an agent? I mean, so first and foremost, we have deadlines. Um, like you guys do when it comes to auditions, um, agents do as well. Everyone has a deadline. And, um, I like to harp on this because, um, you know, a casting director could be juggling anywhere, uh, you know, from one major project to a uh, volume of projects, uh, especially commercial agencies, they're dealing with volume. Um, a lot of film and TV, especially during pilot season, they're having volume at a different caliber with a lot more role breakdowns, um, you know, a lot more recasts or uh, spec changes, etc. But what I'll say is that they're juggling um, a large volume of projects as I am, right? And so uh, first and foremost, two baseline things that I'm doing throughout the day is I'm looking through 
hundreds of breakdowns um, that are being posted by secure casting directors because, of course, we work off of secure databases. We're not working off of like a Mandy.com that's like the Craigslist of acting. Um, so when I'm going through the submissions, I'm weeding through my roster and identifying a, um, a breakdown, a character description with my actors and with my roster. I am then submitting. I may leave a note depending on if I feel like further information needs to be given, i.e. if there's um, a spec in there um, that you connect with. We've actually been through this together, Janet, is, you know, I've pitched you with um, a larger articulation of why you would be a good fit for that role. Um, and so that's something that I take into account and into consideration when I'm pitching to casting. Um, and then, of course, I'm making my submissions. So the bulk of my submissions are happening in the morning, but then it's all peppered in throughout the day. So two baseline things just to make sure that we're all staying on pace is to be, of course, pitching you for projects and submitting my actor's content for projects. So that takes up a large bulk of my day. Now, um, on top of that, I am doing contract mediation for bookings. I'm coordinating with production as well as casting directors on recalls or callbacks, um, dealing with, of course, uh, COVID testing, liaisoning with production and the production coordinators, um, so that, you know, dates are all aligned, making sure that there are no date conflicts with any of the projects that my actors are on. If there are any date changes that are happening on set, which happen quite often, making sure that those are tracked, monitored, and that there are no conflicts with that as well. If we do get recalls or we do get any sort of conflicts, also, having to confirm with my talent whether there are any date conflicts on their end. I'm also trying to navigate through general work schedules of most of my clients. Um, so a lot of confirmations are happening throughout the day. Um, also, if I'm onboarding, there's going to be a peppered in rep call. On top of that, of course, actors need feedback. They need um uh, sometimes validation, right? They, they, they want to make sure that there's a relationship there. So I'm making sure to maintain those relationships as well. Um, you know, of course, <laughs> layered on top of that, there's always stuff that can come up on set. So sometimes things need to just be dealt with on the fly. Um, so, you know, there's, it's a busy day. And on top of that, I am someone that's very um, anal about, you know, reviewing all of the self tapes that I'm given. So I'm taking the time to review every single self tape. So on top of that, um, you know, I am reviewing. So there's a lot of layers to what I'm doing throughout the day. Um, and at some point I need to eat lunch. <laughs> I, you know, it's so, it's so helpful to hear that. Thanks for taking my mouth is dry I mean, after talking about it. Okay. Well, and I, I'm just thinking about like, oh my God, the, the juggling, right? Cause I think there's so much more to what you and what agents do than I ever knew. Then, and if I didn't know, I know I'm not the only one. But of course there is. Like what you're saying, like it's all about things coming up on set, contract negotiations. Like, yeah, it's so much more than just submit, submit, yeah. submit. Which I think we just, again, like we think we're our own little sun in a little universe and everyone is just flitting around and we just don't understand. I shouldn't say we, I should say me because I don't know what everyone else is like. But like, it's just, it's so nice to hear and pull back, I guess, the veil mm. of this weird industry that seems to be, I don't like the words secretive because you can find the answers if you look for them, but it's just really, really nice to hear all the pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. And I, I just yeah. think that a lot of people are very uninformed and that's not, that's not the yeah. fault to them. Um, 
you know, there's not a lot of people that are discussing this. I think what's nice about um, the development of the digital era is that there are a lot more podcasts. There are a lot more uh, casting directors that are hopping on and discussing this stuff so that actors can get more insight on um, what we are doing on the back end. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think you're right in the space of that you you know, as an actor, you are one single person. And, um, you know, the, unfortunately, the world just doesn't revolve around you. And so as someone that um, is really trying my best in the bandwidth of a, of a 24 hour day, while trying to also maintain my own um, my own self, uh, you know, I am making sure that just like you said, I'm kind of juggling a fair bit of stuff. Um, and so I think sometimes we all have to have a little bit more compassion and a deeper understanding for what we're all doing and trying to do. But I think that, you know, a lot of the time, maybe as casting and as um, agents and as producers, et cetera, we do have a pretty well-developed understanding of actors, I would think, whereas I think a lot of actors just don't have a very well-developed understanding of us. So sometimes there can be a lot of talk around um, yeah, agents and casting directors and, you know, it's almost like a little like mean girls gossip at times, but I, I think it's just because there's a lack of understanding and human beings, we want to, we want to understand. So we'll create our own stories around what we think someone does if they're not meeting the expectations of what we've curated in our mind for them to do. Yeah, without ever actually communicating them about what the without ever are. communicating <laughs> relationship. Oh, it's so much like relationship. relationship. Oh I'm telling God. you, it's like it's like you know. Yep. And I always say this, but I understand it's a challenging thing to do. If you don't know, fucking ask me. I'll answer. I will answer you. I will answer you. I will let you know what's going on. I will. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Do you have any final words of advice or wisdom to people, especially not just actors, but like specifically to people who are wanting to do some act, wanting to get into acting after a career that was not that? I think, um, and I talk about this, or I say this to myself a lot, which is to do things that you're scared of. And this industry is a very, it pushes the buttons on fear. And it is scary. And it's unknown. And those are all very confronting things for human beings to deal with. Is something that's unknown, something that pushes boundaries, something that's out of your comfort zone. Because as an actor, you're always getting out of your comfort zone in some way. And you need to you need to kind of always be proactive on going for something that scares you, um, and and pushing pushing the envelope a little bit, um, and and keep going, like keep striving. Um, I think a lot of people just give up too easily and it's, uh, it's a challenging world to be in and I can respect that and push against that, um, like go against the grain a bit because the more that you do that, the more self-assured you're going to be regardless of what happens. The more that you face fears the more of a confident person you become because you realize you faced it 
and it wasn't that scary after all. And then you go through it again and it wasn't that scary after all. I'm going to equate it back to something that has nothing to do with acting. I'm taking a solo uh, skydiving course um, in July when I get back to Toronto. The only reason I'm doing it is for the sheer purpose of that it scares the shit out of me. And I also know that I'm going to gain some depth of experience from it because it does scare the shit out of me and I'll move through it. And then all of a sudden it will be done and I'll realize that it's something I'm capable of. So I would say as an actor, keep on pushing and also like keep reassessing where you're at and where you want to be. Like, Look at this, once again, pragmatically. Look at your overall goals and what you're prioritizing. And if they're not lining up with the way that you're behaving currently, and the way that you're operating currently, then you need to reassess what the fuck you're currently doing <laughs> and shift it to realign with your goals and what you want from this. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Oh my God, I'm gonna... Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and thank you, Maya, for being my guest this week. Thank you for taking the time out of your incredibly bid. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and thank you, Maya, for being my guest this week. Thank you for taking the time out of your incredibly busy schedule, managing your incredible roster of actors, myself included, but also, as she mentioned, you know, finding time to balance with her life, which is so important as well, too. Thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you Maya for being my guest this week. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule, being an incredible agent, a badass human being and you know trying to balance life things. Thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you Maya for being my guest this week. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chat with me and fill us with your words of wisdom. You're an incredible badass agent. You're a wonderful human being. And like I said at the beginning of this podcast, I know everybody's going to want to submit to be on your roster, but listeners, as I told you at the beginning of this episode, make sure you follow the instructions Maya literally just gave you on how to submit properly to an agent. And don't say that I personally recommended you to her unless I actually have a personal relationship with you. Because we will figure. <laughs> thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you Maya for being my guest this week. Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule of not only managing your incredible roster of actors, myself included, but also balancing, you know, how important it is to be a human living in this world. Sometimes we forget, as we talked about in this episode, we as actors think that we are the center of this universe and everyone is just flitting around us. Agents are human beings too, and Maya is an incredible human being, as you just heard. Now, again, I need to repeat this, as I said at the beginning of the episode, if you are going to submit to be on Maya's roster, she literally just told you how to do that properly. So rewind, listen again. If you're going to be submitting to agents, this is the proper way to be doing it. She literally just told you. Also, again, please do not say I personally recommended you to her unless you and I have a prior personal relationship and you and I have discussed personally that you should submit to be on Maya's roster. Please don't. You can say you heard Maya's episode on my podcast, but if you and I don't have a personal relationship, please do not say that this was a referral from Janet McMorty personally, because Maya will talk to me about it. And if you don't, if I don't know who you are, that is a red flag and a bridge burned in a tiny, tiny industry with not many bridges. <laughs> I hope you'll tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye.